Hey guys, I haven't made a video for a while so I thought I might show uh, what I've been up to. So what I have here and what we'll be looking at today is a whole bunch of half kilogram bags of icy material and they are from just uh, generic mixed ICs with legs and I've gotten kind of low on, on stuff to process so I'm, I'm getting into the generic ICs. As I said, each bag about half a kilo or a pound or so, and what they've what they've had done to them is they've been uh, pyrolyzed and then run through the ball mill for a few hours until um, fine enough. And then what I've also done with them is by hand, I've kind of sieved the material using the very coarse sieve, but this doesn't really remove uh, all of the the icy legs, and so. What I started doing then was I started uh, using these little test sieves, and this this is a hundred mesh test sieve, as you guys can see. I started using the little test sieves to actually uh, try to sieve this material, but it's a real pain. I think any of you that have actually uh, done any amount of sieving of um, of icy material knows how it clumps and and how painful it is, and how long it takes to actually uh, get through all of it. Uh, one of the things that I did do to make my life a bit easier is I designed and printed a few uh, little handles for my test sieves like that. Um, makes it a little bit more pleasant than just trying to use the sieve. But yeah, even with a brush at the end of the day, uh, that was still uh, quite a pain in the ass. So I, s I figured uh, rather than use my time doing the manual job, I should make a machine to do the manual job. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we'll be looking at today. So I'll just set up over there and I'll show you guys uh, how the little automatic sieve works. And here we have the uh, the little automatic sieving system that I ended up building. So uh, I just designed all this stuff in on shape and just printed it on the 3D printer. But for those of you playing along at home, there's no real reason why you couldn't simulate something similar to this just with uh, some carefully designed bits of wood. There's no reason that this has to be 3D printed. Um, but I'll just yeah, show you guys through this and, and kind of show you how well this actually works. So obviously we have a, uh, a little DC motor here. I've used a little DC motor out of a cassette recorder or something like that. The reason for that being that um, I can, using my adjustable power supply, which is kind of in the background there, you guys can't really see it, I can change the voltage on this and, and by changing the voltage I can control how fast it, uh, it flicks left to right. And then I've got like uh, just got a little um, adapter printed to sit on the shaft of the motor. I've got a little connecting rod, which connects to the main part here. So all of this is just sitting on a, a 3D printed base as well. There's a eight millimeter bolt uh, over here that the whole thing pivots on on this this side here. And what I've done with the with the center part is I've made it such that um, it's got a a hollow bit inside so I can I can clamp uh, these 3D printed uh, little um, handles that I made. I can clamp that in using the four screws but I can also flip this whole piece over and clamp one of these in and the the sieve will actually sit uh, in such a way that it's sit I can adjust the length such that it's um, the, the, the hole in here and the handle fits over the, the 8mm nut that I've got over there. And yeah, so this is all uh, pretty standard. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see over here on the bottom I've got um, just the vacuum cleaner kind of set up and run. When I, when I run this thing for a few hours I tend to just have the, the shop vac running with a hose from the vent port kind of venting outside just, just to make sure there's no uh, dust from this that settles anywhere else in the workshop and you can also see kind of in the background there is the is the DC adjustable power supply um, the only thing or one of two things that I didn't quite think about enough was how to firstly how do you you, you empty out the sieve when you need to uh, luckily that's not super difficult because I designed this with a, a locking screw in the end here which means I can just use a screwdriver, quickly unhook that, and then the whole thing pulls out and I can empty it. And the second thing, uh, which I haven't finished yet, it's not, not super difficult to do, but 
Um, what tends to happen is because the motor is fairly weak, um, if I have it running without a load, like I'll show you guys now, if I have it running without a load, I can set the speed nicely, but then when I load it up, and this will take probably 150 to 200 grams of powder, when I load it up, it actually slows down and I have to manually adjust the voltage to get the speed right because you want the pow powder to be fluidized uh, through the motion so that it feeds through the sea very nicely. Um, the solution to that is going to be to put a, a little bit of uh, white, like a little white mark on the, the rotating part of the motor here and actually just uh, speed control the motor um, for, for a desired speed because you really always want a consistent speed. And so that should be fairly easy to do and I'll probably get to that uh, this week. The downside of having to do the, the speed control by hand is I can't just leave this thing running for an hour and go away. Um, but in practice it, it goes so quick that it's not really a problem anyway. So we'll run this just uh, without a load so you guys get some idea of what it looks like. I'll just... There we go. And you'll see it's got a... Uh, let's move this up a bit. You'll see it has a very pleasant uh, click clacking sound, kind of like a, uh, an old steam engine or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's running pretty well. We'll turn that off. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, get one of these bags of powder prepared, uh, put some in there and just uh, try and zoom in on the bottom and, and kind of show you guys how well this actually works to, uh, to feed the material through. Okay, we're pretty much ready to go, so I'm just going to uh, use my dust mask so I won't be running the vacuum cleaner while we're recording this little bit. So I'm just going to get that on now. I've got, just over to the left there, I've got a uh, half a kilo of icy material that's ready to go through, so we can pretty much just get this, uh, get this going at a reasonable speed. And you can pretty much just load it as you go. Um, so you'll see it slow down quite a bit there when I load it up. So let's load it up to reasonably full. Okay, so that's about 250 grams. It's about half of the material. And you'll see we're going, we're going way too slow. So we'll just get that speed up a little bit. That's about how fast we want to go. And I'm just going to try using the torch to show you guys um, how nicely the material is going through. The, uh, the whole thing is pretty, um, is pretty well fluidized. If I look, I'll show you guys the top of this pretty soon, but if I look at the top, I can see the material inside is nice and fluid. So um, yeah, this works pretty well. I think, uh, that's a pretty good speed for it to go at. It's only going to take a couple of minutes probably to work through uh, a quarter of a kilogram, so about half a pound of uh, icy material like this. And um, yeah, so I'll let that go. Um, and then I'll show you guys maybe at the end uh, what the stuff looks like that uh, we've sieved out. Okay, so here you've got a top down view. Unfortunately, the material in there is pretty. Uh, it's pretty dark being carbon. It's not really easy for you guys to see that it's really nicely fluidized. You can see it's going a bit faster now. That's because most of the material has actually already worked its way through. So I'll just slow it down a little bit. Maybe if I slow it down a bit you guys will be able to see. Uh, I can't see much of the material in there. So we'll just let it go. And what I'll probably do at this point is I'll just load in the uh, the rest of the material and let it work work its way through. Okay guys, so here's the result of a few minutes worth of the uh, automatic sieving machine. Uh, nice, everything quite smooth, gone through the 60 mesh and here is basically uh, what would not go through the 60 mesh. So as you can see, not very much material, which is quite nice. And I'll just bring the torch in. As you'll see there, it's mostly made up of component legs and a few bigger bits of epoxy. Uh, which, yeah, that's, I'm, I can check this to the microscope, but I've done it many times. And I know basically at this point you're not going to have any bond wires uh, caught up in this stuff. 
and uh, this material here will now be ready for either sluicing or blue ball or whatever you want to do to uh, separate the epoxy from the gold. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Just basically living by my mantra of uh, building the machines rather than manually doing the work, which I highly recommend. So using this I can go through uh, a few kilos of that icy material uh, in hardly any time. Uh, definitely much better than actually um, manually doing the work you know so yeah hopefully that inspires a few of you guys i've got a few more uh, i've got a few more little machines uh, planned that i'll show uh, as i progress through this and um, yeah look forward to hearing from you guys see you later